Buffett's a great guy. You know, he's 84 years old now, and he considers himself a long-term investor. You know, that's, I like that attitude, you know. I speak to a lot of senior groups, and I'll get into my spiel like I am now about, you know, the, the power of long-term investing. And it doesn't take very long before somebody raises their hand and goes, hey, Chamberlain, I don't even buy green bananas, buddy. Don't talk to me about long-term investing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm not I'm making, I'm making that up. It's true. So, you know, every, you know, every, you got to kind of decide what, what is comfortable for you and, and, and go on, uh, go on from there. So, uh, but that's true. A couple of other things real quick about Buffett, and I'll, I'll do a couple of stories real quick. Buffett is, is considered a great stock picker. Okay. Now he doesn't, he's not in and out of stocks. He, he buys a company. Uh, he, he's always asked, Warren, when you decide to invest in a company, how long do you plan to hold on to that stock, that company's stock? And he answers with one word, forever. Okay? He's not concerned about what happens to that stock next week, next month, next year, 20 years from now. He's in this for the long run. Okay? So it's, it, that's his approach to all of this. And, and he's been very, very successful. You can go on that website, BerkshireHathaway.com, and every year for 50 years now, the company is in its 50th year, uh, he writes a letter to his shareholders, and those are available for you to read. Okay? Anybody can read those. And they have a lot of the required mechanical stuff in there, but he also really uh, you know, kind of speaks from the heart a lot about this. And uh, I don't think it was in the last one. I think it was the 2013 letter. Um, he, he wrote about... Um, because he's always asked, Warren, where should I invest? Okay. And he was talking about that, um, that when he dies, and you, you've heard these stories about Buffett and a lot of uh, hyper wealthy people, uh, that they all plan to die penniless. When they die, uh, their money will all be distributed to charities. Uh, they've already asset, provided assets for their children, grandchildren. But he said in, the, in this letter, uh, in, in his letter, uh, he said, I've, I have a number of people that I, I want to bequest a small amount of money to uh, in my estate. I got to thinking, first of all, about that. If you're worth $86 billion, what do you consider a small amount? <laughs> I've often wondered what that would be. But anyway, he says, and, and I've, I've asked the attorney when they send this money to this group of people to include a letter from me that says, here's what I want you to do with the money. Okay. And he said, take 90% of the money and put it into a S&P 500 stock index fund. Take the other 10% and put it into a, a moderate term bond fund. That's all you got to do. You don't have to try to pick stocks. You don't have to try to do anything like that. Just put it in an S&P 500 index fund and forget about it. That will generate about a 1.5% to 2% dividend year after year. You can have that reinvested to take advantage of what Albert Einstein calls the eighth wonder of the world, compounding, okay? And you can have all that stuff going on for you, and you never have to worry about it. You never have to think about it. Yeah, you're going to have some tough times. You know, go back to 2007, 2008, when we went into the Great Recession, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average in 2007 was at 14,000, okay? A year and a half later, it was at 6,547. In a year and a half, it lost half of its value. On March 9th of 2009, 6,547. We've never looked back since then. I don't know what happened on that day, but that's when the, 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 the big crash, I guess you could call it, in the stock market of the Great Recession took place. And we've gone from 6,537 to 18,000. We've tripled our money in there, okay? Um, and with dividends, even much more than that. So, so that's the kind of approach Buffett would, would encourage everyone to take with their money. Let me do one other Buffett story, and then we'll get to a few other things here. Uh, Buffett himself, as I mentioned, loves dividends. He is the largest shareholder of Coca-Cola stock. Okay? Um, he's been investing in it for over, oh gosh, 30, closer to probably 40 years, if not even more than that. Uh, he owns uh, 400 million shares of Coca-Cola stock. That's about 10% of the company, okay? Coca-Cola is what we refer to as a dividend aristocrat. The, to be a dividend aristocrat, you have to have paid a dividend for at least 25 years in a row. And more importantly than that, the company has to have raised their dividend every year for at least 25 years in a row. What's the first thing a company has to do if they want to raise their dividend? Earn more money. Earn more money. 
So that tells you something about these companies right away. They're companies that are earning more money every year so they can pass more of it along to their, uh, to their uh, shareholders, okay? So uh, Coke, by the way, has raised its dividend, I believe, for 51, 52 consecutive years, something like that, okay? So Buffett has invested about $1.9 billion into Coca-Cola stock. That investment is now worth about $15 billion, okay? That's of no interest to Buffett at all. He doesn't really, that, that's not of any interest to him. What's, in, what's of an interest to him is the dividend he's getting on that investment. And he said in his 2010 letter, by the year 2020, our company will receive a dividend from Coca-Cola equal to the amount of money we've invested in the company. He will get a 100% return on his money every year by just sitting there, by doing nothing with the investment other than just letting it perform. And the next year, it'll be a bit more than that, and a bit more than that year after year after year as Coke keeps raising, raising their dividend. Did Buffett do anything that any of us in this, that, that, that none of us in this room would have been smart enough to buy Coca-Cola? and just forget about it, okay? And invest in it every year, over and over and over and over again. No, that's, that, that took no brain power. He didn't have to do anything special. He just made a commitment to a great American company. And there's lots of them out there. I'm a, I'm a person who believes, in, and, and so does Peter Lynch and others, invest in companies you know and understand. You use their products, you know what they do, okay? 